<clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to your next C++ Made Easy HD tutorial. Uh, so, a lot of tutorials, whenever you learn C++ on the internet or whatever, uh, uh, they don't teach you uh, how to use it with header files. They just assume that you should know, or they assume that you'll search up resources, or you'll figure it out on your own. And... Uh, although it's a rather simple subject, uh, I found it really hard to grasp because I really never had help. So uh, I decided to do it. Uh, I decided just to do this tutorial here to help you guys out. So let's say we have uh, a test class or whatever, and or let's let's look at it this way. Whenever we say whenever we made a function uh we had our uh, a proper way to do was to do the prototype up there and then down here we would actually uh say what it did what that function did right and that's how we did uh functions so now all we've been doing is in the classes uh in here we've been doing uh say test class and declaring all our variables and our functions and declaring what they did in here but in C++ uh, a common and a, a proper way to do stuff is to separate code into header and uh, implementation files so what is a header file? a header file is a, a, just a basic uh, a file think of it as like a book so your header file is like the table of contents. It lets you know uh, a kind of a brief, syn brief synopsis of what the chapter is about by the chapter's name. Okay, so it gives you the name, but it doesn't tell you what's actually in it, right? Uh, but from that, you can kind of like grasp what's in it. And then from that, uh, we actually go to the chapter and we can read what's actually inside the chapter. So the same way header and implementation files work, and ex instead of talking uh, the whole time, uh, might as well just uh, show you code. So we're gonna go to the header file section and we're gonna uh, include a header file. So we see .h for header file. Now a header and a CPP file, um, a header file is just like any type of text file, um, right? Just like a CPP file is a text file, right? But a header file is just uh, normally we give a dot h or dot hpp most people will, will proceed it with dot h so we'll keep it at that so we'll put, just put uh, test class dot h and in the source file section we'll add a new item and we'll put cpp and we'll say test class now our header file could easily be put in the source file section and vice versa but this is for a better organization of code so that's why we put it like that uh, so in this header file what we're gonna do is we're gonna include the IO stream and we're gonna say uh, test class and note that the class does not have to be the same name as the header file you specified. It could be any name, but in a general sense, they will be the uh, uh, the exact same. Okay, so right now we're just going to, uh, I don't know, have a private variable. And we'll say value. And we'll say a set value function. And display value okay so this is just like whenever we create a function right we have our prototype but we don't have a description of what is inside it so this is what a header file does so once we go to our test class.cpp what we want to do is if we were to call say test class uh, whatever a test class doesn't exist right it doesn't know it exists so we have to include it just like we include IO stream or something else so how do we include it we've learned how to include something by using the left stream operators and so on and so forth right but it doesn't work like that because we actually created this file in our program to include it we have to use the 
uh, double quotations and then put the class name. So double quote stands for something that you actually included within your program and uh, so internally and the left stream and right stream operators is something that you're getting externally okay so that's just for future reference so you you know that so test class when we include a test class everything that's in here has been copied into here so now it knows that the prototype exists so now we just have to add something to it so we'll say uh, test class uh, set value and we'll say this value is equal to value and then we have our display value and we'll say C out value and L okay so we just declared what these things do in our implementation file now the same thing with the CPP file, it does not have to be the same name as the header file or the same name as the class. It can be any name you want, but generally they are the same name, so you do not get confused on uh, what each class does. Okay, uh, so if we wanted to, uh, just to do this, right, uh, to actually be able to call this class, in the main class, it doesn't know that what test class is, right? It doesn't know it exists. So we declared the test class in our header file. So we will say include test class dot h. So now it exists, right? And we don't need to include the CPP file. We only need the, the prototype, the declaration. So whenever we call anything, so whenever we call set value and when we call display value, what it does is it's saying, okay, this is the prototype. Let's search through all the uh, files in the in our program, all the imp all the CPP files, and let's see if we find uh, that function. So once we see that function and, and we know that it belongs to the test class, then it knows that we should call this method right here, okay, and so on and so forth. So just like a prototype, whenever we create a prototype for functions. It's the same thing. So we declare it, it searches for it, and then it calls it. So if we were to run this, uh, we should get the result 10 to the screen. So we got the value 10. Okay? Uh, so one thing to note about header files is that whenever you make a change to a header file or something like that, it has to recompile it um, all the time, right? CBP files were different. They're just a declaration. The header files are kind of like the meat of it. So uh, why do we have header files? Why do we have headers and CPP files? And for those of you who are coming from a Java or C Sharp background, you might be saying, how come we can't just put it all into one file? Well, C++ works differently than C Sharp or in Java and such like that. Those are interpreted languages. Uh, C++ is a compiled language. And uh, because of that, it has uh, a much different process in the way it uh, presents code so uh, header files basically there could be there could be a million and one questions on why we need headers and CPP files and I questioned this for like a year on why we needed it so it's really it's kind of hard to explain why uh, but the reason why we need it is to explicitly divide code and to let us know uh, the differences between it. For example, um, I could have another header file and I could call it test class two. And in, in this, right, I could include test class two as well. And I can modify test class two in here as well, right? So uh, with header files, we divide different classes and different declarations and stuff into different sections. If we were to just have one implementation file with a bunch of different functions, then we wouldn't be able to divide the code properly. So say, uh, say uh, I'm gonna create another header file right here, and let's call this test class two. So uh, say they have a similar, uh, they have similar functions but they perform them differently. 
so test class two and uh, for the sake of time I'm just gonna copy this so I'll copy this whole thing put test class two include IO stream okay so uh, say we have both of these right the CVP file is, can include as many header files as needed right so we could say test class 2 so because they have two different things we can how are we supposed to distinct between the two well if I want to do something for test class 2 I could easily say test class 2 colon colon set value and so on and so forth now let's say we never had any header files at all right and we had everything in the implementation file so if I had void set value uh, whatever in value and so on and so forth if I wanted to do two distinct things with it then I would have a problem because I only have one instance of it I don't have multiple instances so with the header files it allows us to have distinct different things different prototypes for um, different things all conjoined under different names so test class can refer to one class test class 2 could have something completely different and then in this implementation file we can um, set what it does or do what it does or say whatever it does or call it or whatever we need to do with it so that is just one reason why we have it and there's so many other reasons why and I don't really have the time to explain all the reasons why we have it so I will be posting in the description a link which explicitly d d explains why we have header and CPP files using C++ so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, thanks for watching and bye